Working as a front-end developer, most of your time will be spent creating some combination of vertical and horizontal layouts. An example of a vertical layout is a set of form fields and an example of a horizontal layout is a row of buttons. And these are the exact things that we will create in this lesson. And along the way, we will look at some best practices for spacing your elements and we will be using Tailwind CSS. So let's go. We start off with the Baybone template project and you're free to bring your own. But if you are interested in this particular template, I will leave a link to the video where we create this in the description below. Right now, the homepage is completely empty and we can see that when we visit it in the browser. We will add a simple root div containing a number of simple input fields. There is no CSS customization from our part right now. So if you visit it in the browser, we get a few fields that are displayed horizontally and start to wrap once the horizontal space runs out. This is just the browser default behavior. So let's customize it to display them in a vertical layout. The secret to creating any modern CSS layout is the flex box. And we can start a flex container by using the flex utility class provided by Tailwind. Now by default, the flex direction is a row that is a horizontal layout. But in our case, we want a vertical layout and we can do that by using the Tailwind utility flex call that creates a single column. With this in place, we have a nice vertical layout containing a few input fields. Now, in order to create some space between the different input fields, one option is to start adding top margin to all the input fields except the first one. We can do that with the Tailwind utility MT for margin top and we are using two units over here just as an example. Now with this in place, we indeed get the layout that we wanted. However, it's not particularly easy to maintain and let's look at an example why. Commonly in our UI applications, there is dynamic rendering of certain components. For example, based on a certain condition, we may or may not render the first input. And if the first input goes away, then all of a sudden we have our first input field having a top margin and suddenly our form looks like it's pushed down a bit more than it's supposed to be. A naive fix would be to use the same condition to conditionally add the class to the second input field. So the second input only gets the top margin if some condition is true. That is, we are going to be rendering the first input. And indeed, this does fix the issue. However, it creates a weight dependency between our components where a condition that is really for the first input is starting to have an impact on the second input. Fortunately, there is the Tailwind CSS utility class provided by Tailwind that automatically adds a top margin to all the children of a container except the first one. So let's go back to the original non-spaced layout where we didn't add the top margin to all the children except the first one. And now we can use a utility by Tailwind called SpaceY, which is used to space the children of a container in the Y axis, that is the vertical axis. And this takes a unit similar to how margin top MT took a unit. And we're going to use the same unit value here, which is two. And with this, we get the same layout that we wanted. And if we inspect the individual elements, you can see that the first element does not have a top margin. And then the second, third, fourth inputs do have a top margin to separate them from their siblings. And if because of a certain condition, we no longer render the first element, then we can see that automatically the second element, which is now the first element rendered within the DOM, will not get the top margin and the remaining elements do. Now this principle of pushing down margins from the parent down to its sibling is the same with or without Tailwind. It's just that Tailwind provides a nice utility for it. Now creating a horizontal layout is going to be very similar to creating a vertical layout. And in fact, arguably even simpler because we don't need to provide flex row utility class because a single row is the default direction for a flex box. Here we have a single container div that is going to be the flex root. And then we have a set of buttons that we've styled a bit using Tailwind. The focus is not on the buttons, but rather on this div that contains the buttons. Now, first off, it's automatically going to get a margin top to separate it from the previous inputs, thanks to that space Y2. Second, because of this flex utility, it's going to provide a nice horizontal layout to its child buttons. And that's exactly what we see when we jump to the browser. Now, right now, the buttons aren't being spaced amongst each other, but we can do that quite easily by using the space X utility, that is to provide spacing in the X horizontal axis, and we will use the same unit, which is two. And now we have a nice horizontal row of well-spaced buttons. Now these are being spaced using margin left. So the first button does not have a margin left and then the second and the third buttons do. And this is what is being pushed down by space X2. Now as a final thought, you can achieve the same effect with the newer Flexbox property called cap, but that's not as widely supported as using margins. Plus working as a front end developer, knowing effective use of margins is a good skill to have. 
Thanks for joining me on this lesson. Smash that like and subscribe. Turn your thoughts into comments and I will see you in the next one.